Hey guys, welcome back to All Car News. I'm here with the all new BMW XM here in this Dravic gray metallic color. I'm gonna take you guys on a full tour and review of this all new XM as well as a pretty cool drive up in Bear Mountain in New York. Okay guys, well, I did give you guys a full tour of the BMW XM over at BMW of New York City already. And this is just another version of the XM here in this Dravic gray metallic color. And it is still funky and crazy looking though. I do really like this color and how it shimmers in the sunlight over here. Now we also have the um, kind of gold stitching around the XM badges, though we do have the shadow line package for the exterior trim. So I think it looks a little more understated in this spec. Nonetheless, still a very wild looking XUV. And I have to say, it's starting to grow on me a little bit on the exterior wise, but it's still pretty funky for a lot of people. Of course, we have those stacked exhaust tips and it's a pretty wild rear taillights that have this kind of like crazy stepped shape to them. And, and of course the laser etched BMW badges into the rear glass up there. Now this one actually has a Sakir orange interior, which is really what something I wanted to highlight for you guys because the other one I tested was in completely black and of course this time we are able to take it out on the road and drive it as well. We have um, massive massive wheels in this thing too as well with the end badges on them and you know we've pretty much seen this car all over the place already. We have our uh, DRLs up here and we have our two main um, LED beams down below as well. The grill illuminates all that crazy wild stuff as we do know. We have the newer BMW key fob right here which actually is Pretty, really, really nice. It feels really solid and almost like cold to the touch too. Really do like that. Remote start on here as well, which is a fantastic feature. Um, M mirrors and all that stuff. But this video, I do want to focus more on the driving experience of the XM versus the design since we did talk about that so much already. And I do want to show you guys this pretty cool interior that um, I think brings the XM a little bit more to life versus the black one we saw earlier. Okay guys, hopping into the XM, of course, there's a few ways you can do that. It is keyless access, so you can just walk up and open it. And I really do like these door handles, which actually have a kind of like this geometric pattern on them, which feels pretty premium, pre premium. Before we get into the front seats, I'm gonna show you guys the rear. So again, we have the Sucker Orange leather interior on this one. Really nice feeling material and stuff here. Perforated leather on the sides, stitching, real metal inlays and everything here. Really fantastic stuff. And of course, this one gets the M pillows back here as well, which are crazy looking. I'm like, this is nuts. Um, this is called BMW's M lounge. They're kind of calling it back here. Let's hop inside so you can get a better look. Shut in the door, pretty solid, nice thunk from here. And you can already off the bat see the loads of ambient lighting back here, which goes through the door panel. This is all stitched in leather all the way down to the end of the door sills on the bottom. So of course, for $167,000, you're getting that nice premium tier, really nice illuminated Bowers and Wilkins metal speakers as well. This whole piece is a metal trimmed. You do have some air vents on the side for cooling on back here. Some ports back here as well. So you have a charging port in the back of your seat. And of course, down here, you also have some storage and this really nice stitched leather pad. Some ambient lighting on the floor as well, which is really fantastic. Rear air vents, no um, cooled rear seats, though we do have heated rear seats. I wish they were cooled back here, especially for $167,000. And I have to say, it is pretty um, well insulated in here, so that is a nice feature. Now this M Lounge, of course, we saw our M pillows already, is pretty comfortable. We have these big rear back seats, kind of in this big bench style, very um, well padded, almost like from the 7 Series with this stitching pattern, nice perforated leather, and it kind of blends into this doors as well, which is really cool looking. Um, we also have a center console over here with some cup holders, nothing too crazy though. And of course the big highlight is the wild geometric Alcantara roof with the um, ambient lighting built into it. You cannot get any sort of glass roof option though in the XM, which is really unfortunate. I kind of wish there was a glass roof option and this was would be a different option, but nonetheless, you can only get this roof in the XM. Now up front, which we'll go take a tour of in a second, you can see these really aggressively bolstered seats. Again, completely wrapped in that secular um, or orange leather material. And this one is getting the full kind of carbon fiber trim interior as well. So we'll go check that out in a second. But back here, it's actually a pretty comfortable space. Lots of room. I do feel like I am actually like literally lounging in these seats too. They're just so massive and like it's comfortable. And these M pillows do actually add a little bit of support if you do need them. But nonetheless, this is still a driving SUV at the end of the day, even though it's 6,000 pounds. So let's go hop up front and I'll show you guys what's going on back there. So the car's coming. Nice solid thunk from the doors as well. I'm hopping up front. And again, we're getting the same treatment on the door panels except we have black leather over here. Let's hop inside. 
nice solid thunk once again and here we are in the front and business end of the bmw xm and again i showed you guys mostly around this interior but this is just a different color and i think it really helps it pop a little bit more now you can see the real aggression in those seats they're really super bolstered even on the tops up here you have an illuminated xm badge in the headrest and this is a power adjustable headrest as well full alcantara um headliner which is pretty nice and i like this styling on the um dash over here so this is of course fully stitched and wrapped in leather m badge right here some more of that ambient lighting and this cool little like textured pattern over here and that kind of blends in with the wildly um shaped iDrive 8 screen over you can see that just curves around the dash this really cool kind of structure kind of going around it that blends into the um, heads-up display as well so it's a nicely integrated display as well it's kind of sitting on this bed of matte carbon fiber which slows and flows down into your center console as well some nice extra storage over here with some heated and cooled cup holders cool feature wireless charging mat over there for your wireless carplay and android auto and you do have a center console storage if you need it as well with a usb-c port it's a little bit cool in here actually too of course nice and padded as well um on the steering wheel we do have these cool metal um Yep, it's metal um, paddle shifters that extend fully up and down, and they are carbon fiber aligned on the front, which is really nice looking in the little bit of those red accents. You have your um, M1 and M2 switches to kind of configure your drive modes as well, and of course, all your physical controls for your cruise control and radio settings and phone settings as well. And again, that leather is going all the way down to the bottom of the door panels, which I think is a must at this price point um some are some weird things that i think are missing at this price point but uh, we'll get to that in the driving experience nonetheless this is a hunk of a big suv six thousand ish pounds sure you're getting like 600 and 660 horsepower around that figure from that twin turbo v but it's a heavy vehicle and you do notice it on the driving experience so let's go take it on a drive now because i'm sure you guys are all waiting to see that if you haven't seen one of the thousand videos online already but I'm going to show you guys my impressions of how the XM handles itself on the road. <laughs> Gotta love those M branded seat belts as well. Okay, guys, we are inside the BMW XM and let's take this thing on a drive. Now, if you are not somehow familiar with the XM's powertrain at this point, I think everyone knows it. It is a twin turbocharged 4.4 liter V8 under the hood um, paired to a plug in hybrid powertrain. So, yes, you can plug it in. Yes, you do have um, some sort of driving range on electric mode as well. Um, I like to put it open this settings mode over here. Of course, you can configure your M1 and M2 buttons for your quick settings, but I like to go through all these and kind of test them all out. Um, you have a lot of different options to configure the chassis, the powertrain, the steering, the brakes of the um, XM. And I've actually found the best being comfort because the suspension gets really, really stiff. You can also adjust your shift settings right here as well. Um, we're gonna keep it in Sport Plus. Um, minimum en energy recovery, so low regen. Um, sport steering, sport brakes, and we'll keep it in four wheel drive. Four wheel drive sport requires traction control off, so I don't think that'll make too much of a difference in this thing. Of course, we have MX drive, some rear steering, adaptive, dampers, anti-roll bars, it's a whole bunch of crazy stuff on this thing. M Sport differential as well. A lot of technology and um, I'll just show you my impressions of all, of all this right now and how it kind of blends together. So we're safe over here and get off on the road. And as you can see, <laughs> it's a freaking beast to drive around. Now, so we're in the um, calmest, transmission setting right now if i bump it up to three it does get all really really harsh and the shifts do get pretty aggressive actually um now how is it to drive now the xm is like a six thousand plus pound vehicle so it is a heavy 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 big thing thankfully the brakes work very well um that's one good thing with m cars but nonetheless it is still a heavy thing you do feel that weight even going around corners now bmw's added a lot of technology to this thing to kind of manage that weight we have that rear steering we have those um active anti-roll bars and stuff but it does feel a little unnatural sometimes when you are going around corners and you're going around some stuff you kind of feel that weird like pull in sometimes it does obviously help performance but it's a little unnerving on some occasions i'll show you guys the, a little bit of acceleration that this thing has It was 65 <laughs> not 60 but as you can see it's quick it's not the quickest m car that bmw own uh, has right now um they say around four seconds to 60 most people are getting around 3.8 which is probably a little bit more reasonable though at this price point at around like 167 thousand dollars 
you are looking at some more aggressive territory, like a Cayantaro GT, um, that's like Urus territory almost, and the, even the DBX. So you have some things to consider in this price point. And does the XM really stand out enough versus like an X5M competition or an X6M competition? Well, I don't think so. Those are quicker vehicles actually. So this is in like a weird kind of standpoint. It's like this M luxury almost that BMW is doing with this car. Um, you know, to the average, human being not like a seasoned journalist who's going to criticize this thing it drives very sporty um the steering isn't the quickest most responsive thing from bmw though i will say it is better than some of their um, other products actually even some m products in terms of steering it, this feels very similar almost to how the uh, mazda cx 90 steering does this is a little bit more twitchy and a little bit more direct but in the terms of like the lightness yet also directness i'm getting that kind of same vibes there obviously completely different vehicles and it's, it might be crazy to even compare them but that's kind of the vibe i'm getting from the steering inputs at least um you can adjust that to even more of a comfortable setting as well but of course this is a high performance suv with a crazy amount of power and it's meant to be driven at the end of the day so driving wise you know it's good and like i said that weight is always going to be present in your driving experience with the XM. Around corners, it manages it well enough, but right here, you can still feel it. It is, body roll is definitely present, even though they try to control it as much as they want to. And I will have to say, the suspension itself is super, super, super stiff. That's why I'm actually keeping the chassis in comfort right now, because in Sport Plus, it kind of just like, it, it, it rattles you a little bit. It's a little unnerving. And that's something that a lot of these BMW M cars are kind of known for. Even though this isn't, wasn't really developed by M, it was kind of developed by BMW and like handed to the M division. So it's another weird little fun fact that I learned. Um, but you can have fun with it. You definitely can have fun with it. And there's a lot, and I mean a lot of endless technology to kind of sort through and learn with this car. Cause you have to remember it's a plug-in hybrid as well. So you can go through like these charge hold settings. You can have an EV mode as well. You can do all these crazy different things to kind of like tune it to your liking. And of course there's the endless um, settings and configurations you can do for all the chassis, the powertrain, the brakes, all that stuff as well. So it may take some time to kind of get used to the XM and how it tailors to you, but Oh wow, it does pull through corners though. And the shifts are okay, they're fast enough. And I have to say, if you keep it in a more aggressive shift setting, it is a little too harsh. So I'm gonna put it into setting level three. <laughs> okay, it is fun. You don't you realize the weight's there all the time, but it is pretty fun. Um, but those shifts are a little too aggressive in, in the three setting. I think they actually kind of like, I feel like they're slowing you down almost a little bit. So two or one for the setting for the shifts, at least it's fine. But you know, nonetheless, it's a tech filled beast, this thing. Uh, I'm gonna try it in EV, EV mode a little bit if we have enough charge. It's been driven around all day. So it may not have enough charge to be in pure EV mode, but I believe you can go up to like 80 miles an hour in that one. Um, there's a decent amount of range too for this big heavy chunk of thing. And you know, this thing, you want to get looks on the road, this is the car for you. You're going to get some crazy looks on the road for the XM because it just looks like a monster. Or Jetta, slow down over here. Um, I do love these shift paddles though, by the way, when you are driving the XM, they do feel very nice to shift. Um, I, the nice tactility to them as well, which I really find fantastic. I love all BMW's um, quick access, access controls, kind of like those preset configurations as well. All the M cars have that. It's one of my favorite little features there. So, you know, you're getting most of that stuff in here, but I do find it weird that, you know, they came out with this new vehicle and they have the new 7 Series, right? And it, that has that new, nice new steering wheel, a lot more new tech. And I'm surprised that it just didn't put that in this one either. I think that would have been made, made this a little bit more justifiable, justifiable for that $167,000 price tag. But... You know, nonetheless, this is what you're going to be getting if you do try to get into one of these. And the big, big news, I think the real most important news for this car is that this powertrain will be going into the upcoming um, M5. So this new plug, this is the first car getting their new S powertrain from the M division, and it's going to be coming into the M5 next. So we're going to be seeing this powertrain a lot more, and I'm really hoping that BMW is going to be defining it, or, I'm sorry, refining it a little bit more before it makes it into those other vehicles because I think it needs a little bit more work. And I don't mean the engine particularly, but I do mean the uh, gearbox and how that plug-in hybrid setup kind of controls itself because it's a little clunky sometimes, um, especially with shifts and that stuff. 
And you know, at the end of the day, you still have all of your tech features laid in throughout this interior as well. You have like your radar cruise control, your adaptive um, radar settings, all that stuff. And it's fine, it works. And it, unfortunately though, with iDrive 8, you do have to dig through the menu to access a lot of these settings. And I think it's a little dangerous to do while you're driving actually, because they kind of removed a lot of the hard buttons. So you have to like look over, go through all that stuff to find, to adjust some certain settings, including the climate controls, which is a little unnerving. And a lot of people complain about how clunk, cluttered and clunky the screen is over here because oh boy there is actually a lot of stuff going on there um thankfully there's iDrive 8.5 which is like an updated version of this iDrive 8 coming out that's supposed to be addressing a lot of these weird quirks but nonetheless you know that's what you're going to be getting in the iDrive in the new xm and as you can see i put it into sport plus for the suspension and if you're not noticing more bumps and a chunky chunky ride <laughs> that's what's happening right now it, it just gets a little too stiff for me and I don't think it's really benefiting the vehicle either. It feels too bouncy, too stiff. Um, I think the comfort suspension is really the sweet spot for the XM, and even that's stiff. Uh, oh, geez, yeah, right back to comfort for me. Thank you. I don't want to sound like a grandpa, but I love performance vehicles. But it's just things a little, a little interesting to drive is my uh, <laughs> final word for those impressions. I will say braking performance, I did mention earlier, is really, really good. And if you throw it into a calmer setting, it is a pretty fine daily vehicle. A little bit of some lurching I found with the uh, gearbox and that um, EV powertrain, especially that transition sometimes between the uh, gas engine and the, e, uh, the electric motor, because that motor isn't in any of the wheels, it's sandwiched in the um, transmission with the actual gear, the HP gearbox as well. So sometimes there might be a little bit of like delay or some like, weird stuff going on there. So in that aspect, I, I like to have my own definition of the XM, and I, I'm going to take this out of t using the X instead of as BMW's M SUV signifier as meaning experimental. This is an experimental vehicle, I think, for BMW in an endless amount of ways, but primarily, I think, for this powertrain, and so they want to make sure they're, they're going to have this thing refined and ready to go for the upcoming M5 and probably a few other vehicles that are going to be able to use this powertrain down the road. I think that's the real... Um, aspect of this car that they're kind of like tuning out working out bugs so i almost want to say that this is going to be like a beta type vehicle for their future products coming out all about the powertrain technology features um so if you want to hop into that i'll leave that up to you but it's definitely a unique specimen in the scv space nonetheless thank you guys for joining me on this pov drive of the bmw xn and stay tuned for a lot more content coming soon from all car news cheers